Hello, this is Tracy Zhang with our Instructional Design for Teachers workshop. Today, we are going to look at the steps of using the basic instructional design model called ADDIE. The reason we are learning this is to help you as lead teachers implement a district-wide instructional design initiative to improve student performance and test scores. Our objective is to identify the steps of the instructional design model using our basic model or umbrella model called ADDIE. ADDIE involves five basic steps, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. We typically look at these, as M.D. Roebler states in her textbook on instructional design, in three phases. The first phase is analysis, the second involves design, development, and implementation, and the last phase is evaluation. Before we move further into ADDIE, Recall what we discussed in our last session of this workshop. We talked about how you as teachers already know a great deal about lesson planning, but how lesson planning is different from instructional design. Instructional design is an orderly process, but flexible. It should incorporate what we know about effective teaching and learning. And most instructional design programs confirm that instructions work by specifying criteria for determining students have learned from that instruction. This involves a much more in-depth evaluation than a typical assessment used in a lesson plan. Let's begin with the analysis phase of the five steps of ADDIE, Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. Analysis looks at not only setting instructional goals for content and knowledge, but also at the problem itself. Can this problem be solved using a systematic instructional design? Instructional designers also look at a variety of other data to base the instruction on. If the problem can be solved with a systematic instructional design, what are the learners like? What is the environment like? and what skills and knowledge will be needed as prerequisite skills before you teach them what you are planning to work with. What order should the skills be taught in? What kind of environment for learning should be used? Should it be online or a face-to-face -face classroom study? Are there any limits in terms of resources, time, human resources, or budget issues? And what about technical issues? Do you have internet access? And more importantly, what skills and knowledge will students have after instruction? What are the learning outcomes? Let's look at phase two now. Phase two involves design, development, and implementation. Instructional designers plan what assessment instruments will be needed to meet all the goals and desired outcomes. Here, as they design and develop assessments, instructional strategies, materials, and media, they look closely at how the learning environment will be developed. Instructional designers use a very systematic approach during development. They tend to be very strict about the details and base development on data. Their focus is on meeting learning objectives, content and subject matter analysis, assessment, lesson planning, and media selection. This design phase is very systematic with a logical, orderly process of planned strategies that all focus on achieving the stated goals and objectives. Phase 3 involves evaluation and revision. Here the designer uses formative evaluations in which they ask whether the instruction engaged students. Did it help the students meet objectives and pass the test to perform the skill? Was the instruction effective for all students and for those with different learning abilities? Revisions based on the data from these various evaluations are made. Instructional designers also use a summative or program evaluation to assess whether the program is as effective as alternative or cheaper programs. Instructional design is a complex process that's much more in-depth and based on data than lesson planning but I'm sure you'll master Addie. 